YouTube, it's Emma Blois 10 here and this is actually an update video to an old segment, Q&A segment I did like a year ago and that was on uh, popular questions I got about cards in my decks. Um, as I said this is an update version because um, some cards, uh, views on some of my cards have changed and others are sort of more related to um, recent changes I've had in my decks and everything and instead of answering all single individually. I thought I'd do this video and if needed redirect you guys towards this so you can understand why I've chosen these cards and everything or not running these cards from my decks and that so hope you guys enjoy. Okay I'm going to start off with Blue Eyes Dragon since it's my domain deck that tends to get the most comments. Okay first question which everybody's going to expect is why don't you run Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon? I like the card I think it's cool, but it's not my style. I honestly believe that the Red Eye Starness Missile Dragon is best used in Red Eye Steam decks for the Hopeless Dragon and Disaster Dragon since they rely on it and it is the main theme card of that deck. My Blue Eyes Dragon's deck is a completely different build and therefore does not need Red Eye Starness Metal. I have tried it out in my deck a long, long time ago, but it just did not feel right to me. So that's why I don't run it. It just does not feel right to me. It's not my style, you know. I, you know, that's so. Yeah, if you, if you don't like that reason, then you know, tough luck. That's that's just me, okay. I don't run with the crowd, if you see what I mean. Okay, I've had not 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 very many questions on this particular two cards, but this is just the uh, two cards that have changed. Uh, my views have changed on in the past wee while, and that is of course Future Fusion and Five Blood Dragon. I used to really l dislike these cards because I saw them more of as an abuse card for getting out your red eyes, darkness, metals and that in the more meta types of dragon decks and also to set up the graveyard with other um, other cards and that so people could get their uh, win conditions and that on the field. Now um, I run 5 bud uh, future fusion to mainly to target five god dragon and I really am happy when I do manage to get that dragon out but it's also mainly and I can also use it rare on the rare occasion for blue eyes ultimate dragon and if it does work then that's really wonderful but I mainly I do use it to set up the graveyard like with totem dragons so I've got totem dragons to summon if needed because that's where its effect is best used um but I don't abuse the card, like, you know, I, I set up the graveyard uh, so quickly in that way that, you know, I get um, I get the win conditions and that on the field. Because the win condition of my deck is Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. If I use Future Fusion, I can send the three white stones where their effects will activate and I can get three blue eyes into the hand along with Polly, which is my main way of getting out Ultimate Dragon. So it's more of a stepping stone into getting to my win condition, not a actual win condition card for myself if you see what I mean. Um, so I used to hate it but I actually really like it now. It, I can see the advantages of it and uh, so yeah you can, it, it's surprising what can happen uh, with your views of a card change when you actually try it out in that. Okay um, I've, uh, I've been asked about um, the new Chaos Dragon structure deck in that and if my Blue Eyes deck will ever go towards that. No. I think the Chaos Dragon structure deck is interesting, it's an, it's an interesting build, but I wouldn't run it myself, if you see what I mean, because my deck isn't focused on Chaos or anything, so it wouldn't, wouldn't really benefit me. If I decide to build a separate build for that, maybe, but at the moment it's sort of a question mark topic. Um, one of the recent changes I did in my deck, um, which everybody's been asking about, is why are you not running Dragon's Mirror anymore? Now I did explain the reason in the in the deck um, video I did do the ch first change in, but obviously there are people who don't um, who can't be bothered to watch the video fully in order to understand the reason. Hence why I'm doing it in this. As I said, I don't like remove from play cards anymore. Dragon's Mirror was more of a dead draw to me. I felt. And every time I did remove the blue eyes from play, I had no real way to get them back, and I hate that. You know, I like to use a card to its full potential, not just as a um, 
an easy way to, you know, get to a wind condition, if you see what I mean. And yes, I, there are ways to get back blue eyes. You might say, you know, there's burial, there's return from a different dimension, there's DDR and everything. But my deck isn't focused around that, and these cards were more of dead draws than and hindrances than any help in Honest Truth. So that's why I'm not running those cards anymore. And the final question, which has been a more uh, po popular one most recently, is why are you not running Kaiba Man, since it's a Blue Eyes Dragon's deck? Two words. Totem Dragon. Totem Dragon can only resurrect itself from the graveyard if there are all dragons. Kaiba Man is a warrior, so you figure that out. And besides, the other reason is Kaiba Man is good for getting out blue eyes, but as soon as you summon a Kaiba Man, your opponent is going to know exactly what it is you're about to summon, and therefore can get their solemn warning, bottomless, torrential, whatever the heck it is, ready for blue eyes and therefore destroy your strategy when that happens. So, I mean, Kaiba Man is a good card and I really like it, but it's too obvious, you know, and Totem Dragon's more viable, really, or um, uh, is more is more better, really, just because when I do resurrect it from the graveyard or do summon it out or whatever, you don't know what I'm going to do with it. You don't know if I'm going to tribute it for a blue eyes. You don't know if I'm going to exceed with it. You don't know if I'm going to sinker with it. So yeah, Totem Dragon's more um, uh, more wide ranging than Kaiba Man in Honest Truth. So yeah. On to Crystal Beasts or my Rainbow Era deck. Um, most popular one I've been asked so far is why are you not running Sin Rainbow Dragon? I did run it but it, I felt like it was locking me down and I didn't like her as I said I don't like removing from play cards anymore so removing from play Rainbow Dragon which I only run one copy of is a bit you know was a bit meh so it's no longer in the deck anymore. Uh, another big question I got was uh, why are you running one Crystal Abundance? Crystal Abundance is mainly used in meta Crystal Beast decks as an OTK. I don't like using OTK. I use Crystal Abundance solely either to reset the field if I'm in a really tight situation or as a way, an extra way to reuse the Crystal Beast abilities in order to get out Rainbow Dragon if it, if it gets into my hand. Um, why am I only running two rare, rare value? I did used to run three, but I'd struggled to keep enough Crystal Beasts on the field to use three. And besides, I feel like I've got enough draw power. Um, you know, I've got a hand destruction in there just in case, and then you've got the draw power of the ancient city as well if it um, if it goes round. So yeah, two is more than adequate for me. I feel. And finally, um, why Rainbow Neos? Um, as you know, I run Rainbow Dark Dragon in the Rainbow Era deck as well. I can only summon it out with Rainbow Gravity. There are occasions when I do get it in the hand. And before I added in Rainbow Neos, it was a dead card in the hand that I couldn't really do anything with. But with Rainbow Neos now, which can be fused with either Rainbow or Rainbow Dark, gives it a bit more options. So if it does get into my hand, then I've got a fusion material ready for Rainbow Neos, which 9 times out of the 10, the opponent will not expect. And finally, onto the deck that's been getting the most recent questions is Light Swans. Why am I only running two Lila? Two Lila, I feel, is more of a meta slash competitive build. My Light Swans is a fun build, and besides, I only want to I want to run a more wide ranging variety of the Light Swans. Hence, why I've got things like Genis and Rinian in there, and I've got plenty of back row removal anyway. So I think one Lila is more than adequate. Now this 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 next card, um, some people are like, "Oh, your deck sucks because you can't run. You're not running three of this. You know why are you not running three of this? You know your your deck's crap and stuff like that." Well, it's my decision to run two solar recharge because it's my build. I build it the way I want, and the deck thins out really quickly. And I've got plenty again. I've got plenty of draw power, so I don't need to run three. So yeah. And finally, um, <laughs> I got asked, why are you running Wing Karibo instead of Nico Garner? Well, 
As a light sworn deck, I wanted to keep it all light monsters, and I've always liked Queen Karibo, but I never got the chance to really run it in any deck, and I saw it, uh, saw an opportunity in the light sworns because it's a light type fairy monster, and uh, <laughs> it reminds me of a funny game ender I saw by Dark Patrician 84, which was a Wing Karibo with Honest for game. So I thought it was just a bit, something just a bit fun and a bit unusual to throw to put into the deck. And, you know, as I said, it's my Nico Gardener of the Light Sworn deck. And it, again, it's just my build. I put, put wherever I feel like uh, in there, whatever feels right to me. Alright, anyway, guys, that is it for this QA segment. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that answered your questions. If you do have any more questions regarding cards that I play in my decks, post down in the comments below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Until then, take care, and we'll see you later. Bye!